Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Second county. We're going to start the agenda portion review session for Wednesday, November 18, 2015. Good evening. Ordinances on second reading, 501, an ordinance to amend supplement revised general ordinance of the city of New Brunswick, Title 10, vehicles and traffic. Men various schedules in the city ordinances. Schedule 24, no parking at any time. Schedule 26, with no parking at certain hours. Section, I'm sorry, section 10, 16, 3, schedule 45, pass the drop off and pick up zones. No resolutions, 529, approve agenda amendments, 530, approve payroll, 531, authorize refund for redeemed tax sale certificates. 532, approve ABC liquor license renewals, 2015 to 2016. 533, disposition of charges against Kazmass Incorporated trading as JJ Tavern, 186 Hamilton Street, liquor license number 1214-330340033. 534, authorize relocation liens for amount expended to relocate tenants of certain properties, 53 Carmen Street, 64 Plum Street, 66 Seaman Street, 48 Delavan Street, 192 Rutgers Street, 63 Remsen Avenue, 24 Oak Street, 177 Somerset Street. 535, authorize tax collector to transfer credits on several tax and utility accounts. 536, authorize purchase by police department under state contract A81348 from Lanigan Associates Incorporated for four bulletproof vests for the police department, not to exceed $3,025. 537, authorized resolution of concurrence with New Jersey Department of Transportation, with no passing zone along Route 26, Livingston Avenue in New Brunswick. 538, authorized resolution of concurrence with New Jersey Department of Transportation, with no passing zone along nine, Route 91, Jersey Avenue in New Brunswick. 539, resolution of concurrence with New Jersey Department of Transportation, with no passing zone along Route 172, George Street in New Brunswick. 540, approved amendment resolution. R0914 1549. Reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of 1,920.50 to Mitzner and Mitzner. Police Officer Brad Burdell in the matter of Belosh First Police Officer Brad Burdell from 30,143.75 to 33,066.25. 541. Approved Chapter 159 Buzzard Insertions. U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Federal Emergency Management Agency. For Fire Department Generator Project. Amount. 221196. 542. Approved award of contract with APRIS Incorporated for online access to accident reports for the police department. 12 month period commencing November 19, 2015 and ending November 18, 2016. Specification number 48915 RFP. Fair and open. 543. Approved medical resolution R101239. Reason to pay 7364, the final bill for Police Department Division of Domestic Violence Digital Copy Machine with GE Capital Information Tech. Solutions doing business as RICO USA, the amount of 7364, approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. <coughs> 544, authorized lease of copy machine for the Police Department of Domestic Violence. <coughs> Capital Information Tech Solutions doing business as RICO USA Incorporated. For one, RICO MP2554 SP Digital Copier System. Not to exceed $80.92 per month commencing December 1st, 2015 and ending November 30th, 2019. 48 month contract. State contract A82709. New Jersey cost per copy, copiers slash M0053. 545 approval of resolution R081556. Pay additional legal fees in the amount of $2,499.89 to the De Palma Law Firm Incorporated uh, LLC for special counsel, City of New Brunswick. Uh, eight ad, eight, ad, 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 Marvick, Adversarial Marvick Construction Corp Corporation from $15,000 to $17,499.89. 546, approve award of contract with Maximum Quality Foods Incorporated. Furnish and deliver food products for the Senior Citizen Resource Center. Term is 12 month period commencing November 19, 2015, and ending November 18, 2016. Rebid specification number 452 15PR, not to exceed 161,138 87. Approval of resolution R101521. Change order number one with Joe Med Contracting Corporation for Plum Street, 
sanitary, sewer, and roadway improvement. Specification number 886-15. The amount is 1,688.88. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 548, approve relaxation of the city mortgage ordinance and lane closure. Requested by Sky High Records and Equipment Incorporated. The reason is the hoist new HVAC equipment to the roof at 106 Wall Street. The date is Saturday, November 21st, 2015. Alternate dates. Saturday, December 5th and 12th, 2015. Time 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. 549, approved relaxation of the city noise and road closure. From Amquip Crane Rental to remove Metro PCS cellular <coughs> equipment and steel platform. From 390 George Street, date is Saturday, November 21st, 2015. Alternate date, Saturday, November 28th and, Dece and December 5th, 2015. Time is 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. 550, approved award of contract, New Jersey Realty Advisory Group, LLC, for real property appraisal services. New fire department headquarters project, specification number 889D, 15 RFP, not to exceed $8,500. 551, approved request for the use of city sidewalk, requested by G&J's Kids Fashion, LLC, location sidewalk in front of 276 George Street. Anniversary sale of new clothing release, date Saturday, November 21st, 2015. Time is 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. 552, approve appointment of counsel. Name, James <coughs> F. Clark and the third Esquire for special counsel for Board of Ethics. <coughs> not to exceed 4,650. 553, approve request for street closing. Request by Sacred Heart, St. Joseph Church, location. St. Joseph Church on Somerset Street, the right on Harvison Street, cross French Street, the town between the Troop Avenue ending at Sacred Heart Church. For Our Lady of Guadalupe procession. The date is Friday, December 11, 2015. Time is 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Police have for their duty. Uh, I will discuss by council the proposed 2016 City Council meeting schedule. Right. That was in the uh, council's packet. Um, I believe we tried to identify all of this federal, state, uh, and religious holidays for purposes of scheduling next year's meetings. If that's acceptable, the council will agendize it at the next meeting for a document. Does anybody have any problem with that? Anybody? Okay. Thank you. Will the court please call the roll? Council Member Anderson? Here. Council Member Escobar? Here. Council Vice President Fleming? Here. Council Member Garlotti? Present. Council President Egan? Here. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act have been complied with and satisfied and that the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of the time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick, has been filed with the City Clerk, has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I think tonight not only will we have a moment of silence for our men and women serving our armed forces and who have lost their lives in battle, we'll also have a moment of silence for the people of France who lost their lives. We have minutes from October 21st, 2015. Can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes? <coughs> Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We will now move to a public hearing on the Casmas Incorporated Training as JJ Tavern Liquor License Number 1214-33-034-003. Mr. Shammy? Yes, uh, Mr. Council President, members of Council. Um, this evening there has been agendized a, uh, a hearing on liquor license charges against Casmas Inc. Trading as uh, JJ Tavern, also known as Lounge 372. Um, as the Council is aware, the matter was adjourned a couple of times uh, so that we could provide um, the licensee with the uh, reports and documentation um, detailing the complaint, which uh, was dated July 21st, 2015, against the license establishment. Casmas Inc. is represented by uh, Louis Marquetta, who is here today, 
um, with his uh, with his principal of, of the uh, of the establishment. Um, I can report to the council that I've had extensive discussions uh, with council as well as with uh, Detective DeGraw, who's standing in the back of the room, who's the ABC enforcement officer, uh, who actually signed the charges relative to this license establishment. Um, having had extensive discussions um, and looking toward the uh, future, hopefully positive conduct of this particular licensee, uh, taking into consideration uh, that this licensee has never been charged before. Um, myself, as well as uh, counsel for the licensee, is prepared to propose a resolution of the charges to the city council uh, for its consideration. And if acceptable, um, it will be adopted uh, this evening by resolution. Uh, specifically, um, the licensee um, has agreed to plead uh, no contest uh, to four of the counts in the complaint. Um, counts five, which deal with um, violations of keeping the appropriate books and records uh, up to date. Uh, count seven, which uh, deal with uh, certain advertising, which is a violation of the uh, Title 13 of the Administrative Code. Um, count 10, which deals with uh, posting certain notices that are required under the uh, statute that uh, applies to liquor license establishments. And um, count 12, which uh, deals with another administrative violation under Title 33. So those four counts, um, <coughs> the licensee is proposing uh, to plead no contest to. Um, the remaining counts would be dismissed. Um, in, in conjunction with that, the licensee will accept a 15-day suspension of its liquor license. Um, that particular suspension would commence January 4, 2016 and run through January 18, 2016. In addition, the licensee um, has agreed for the remainder of the license term, that's through June 30th of 2016, to incur the cost of an extra duty police officer on every Friday and Saturday evening from 10.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. Um, when the premises is open for business for purposes of maintaining order in and about the licensed premises. Um, the council is aware we've had that special condition with other licensees, which uh, I believe is proved to be helpful um, with respect to issues that occur in and about the licensed premises. Lastly, the uh, licensee has agreed to provide a 72-hour notification of any uh, special or promotional <coughs> events that they decide they might want to offer there at the establishment, as well as any change in the employee list um, with respect to employees who may um, come to be employed uh, by the establishment, um, either for the special events or otherwise, uh, within 72 hours. Those are the terms and provisions um, of the proposed resolution. Uh, I believe it's appropriate to have Mr. Uh, Marquetta uh, acknowledge that, uh, and perhaps his client as well. And having, after having done that, the council, if you have any questions um, or concerns, I'm certainly sure I'm going to answer. Mr. Marquette, step up to the microphone, please. Introduce yourself for the record. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Council. Louis Marchette on behalf of uh, Kazmas Incorporated and uh, Cupertino Garcia, the owner of Kazmas, who is here. I listened to Mr. Shammy, and uh, what he has uh, uh, stated is correct and true, uh, and is our uh, 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 and is the appropriate uh, resolution of the. Uh, agreement that we have and statement of the agreement we have in, uh, in regard to this matter. And uh, uh, I can concur with it and I appreciate Mr. Shannon's help. On behalf of uh, uh, Mr. Garcia, and I appreciate the help that uh, Detective DeGraw has provided in this matter as well. Now, if I may, I can just ask yeah, my client. Sure. So, Mr. Garcia, would you come up, please? Yes. Mr. Garcia, you've heard what, what uh, Mr. Shammy has stated with respect to resolution of the charges against the license. Yes. And do you agree with that? I do. And you intend to comply with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Okay. Would anybody from the public like to comment on this particular matter? Yes. 
President. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I just think that's the date of the 15 day suspension. Uh, January 4th to, the, to January 18th, 18th, 4th to the 18th of 2016. So they couldn't reopen again until the 19th. Correct. And they have to close on the 4th. Yeah, no, that it, we just recently changed that. Um, yeah, no, we, uh, there was a discussion <coughs> out in the hall with uh, um, Mr. Marquetta, which apparently um, I had the dates wrong. So the stipulation, which uh, will memorialize the settlement, uh, will be amended to reflect the correct dates. And this particular stipulation of settlement will be executed um, on behalf of uh, the licensee, uh, Mr. Marquette, and myself on behalf of the police department. And uh, it will be the document that will govern this particular disposition. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions in this matter? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Thank you. So, assuming the council is. is we'll move uh, to it with the, uh, the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have ordinances on second reading 501. An ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the city of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic. Amend various schedules in the city ordinances. Section 10, 16, 20, Schedule 24, No Parking at Any Time. Section 10, 16, 30, Schedule 26, no park and parking certain hours. Section 10, 16, 250, Schedule 45, passenger drop-off and pickup zones. Would anybody from the public like to comment on this particular ordinance? Anybody on this particular ordinance? Seeing that? Move the ordinance. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We have resolutions 529 from 553. Uh, I am going to abstain from the one on the dealing with the ethics and uh, and the Mr. Gordon. 52. 52, please. Oh, no, Thank you. Would anybody from the public? like to comment on any of these particular resolutions this evening. Anybody from the public on the resolutions? On the resolutions. Seeing none? Move the resolutions. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We'll now have the public portion of the meeting. If anybody would like to address the city council this evening, please come up with a microphone. You have five minutes to address the council. Please state your name and address. Come on up. All are welcome. Hi, my name is Jasmine. Um, I'm So last year, as temperatures got colder, Rutgers University, a public university, closed its library doors to anyone that was not a student after 10 p.m. Many students asked what would become of the unhoused individuals, and many responded that there should be a shelter for them. And that made a lot of sense. The university isn't supposed to house people or shelter anybody. Um, but in my time in New Brunswick for the past five years, I haven't heard of any of these shelters that are open. Um, there is an interfaith rotating shelter in the extreme cold. And of course, um, the clergymen that come together to put this together in the winter um, are very inspiring and their efforts are necessary. But I don't think this is the only time a city should provide a helping hand. A life should not only be valued when it's close to death. Um, unhoused individuals arrive at their situations for many different reasons. Um, some are veterans. Uh, some have had to make the choice between living with an abusive partner or on the streets. Some were unjustly fired, some have mental or physical illnesses, some have a disability, others are struggling with drug addictions. The reason I share that is to emphasize that many of these people have already faced a major life trauma and living on the streets isn't helping them heal from this major life trauma. Instead, they are only being inflicted by more. So chronic homelessness is not a personal problem, it's a societal problem, and I think we need a societal solution to it. Um, in the last two weeks, we've had an online petition on change.org, and over 800 people from the New Brunswick area or from Rutgers University have signed it, demanding that New Brunswick have an emergency shelter for these individuals. 
Um, and I believe some of them are here tonight to express in person how much we need this shelter. So just for like numbers, can I see people's hands if they're here for that reason, or if they actually just support having a shelter in New Brunswick? Yes. I'm running the meeting here, not, not you. Okay. okay. So our demands are that we meet with an appropriate representative from the city to open a shelter by this January. It doesn't have to be built from the bottom up, but we demand that there be a shelter available in New Brunswick, as there currently isn't. And we demand that ongoing, that there be a committee that involves both the city, representatives from, from Rutgers, and unhoused individuals that see that we have a rapid rehousing model implemented in New Brunswick. What town are you from now? Where do you, where do you hail from? I've lived in New Brunswick for the last five years. So before that, before Jersey you came City. Brothers, where? Jersey City. Jersey City, yeah. Okay. So you realize we do have homeless shelters in New Brunswick, right? Every homeless person that I've spoken to has not been able to get into these shelters because there's a long waiting list. Mr. Patterson, could you give a little more uh, insight to our shelters and what we have available, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Council President. Uh, there are a number of, of uh, shelters for the homeless uh, in New Brunswick. Uh, there's the Osnum uh, Men's Shelter on Mill Street, which has 40 beds. That's uh, for uh, the men down there. Are you writing this down? No, I knew about that shelter, and it's been at full capacity. Yeah. Uh, there's the Women Aware uh, Safe House, which has 24 beds for victims of uh, domestic violence. I also knew about They're, that one, and that's specifically. On, excuse me, but I have the floor right now. Thank you. Uh, had the Osnum uh, Family Shelter, which is located in, uh, in Edison, which has 16 beds for signals, uh, and 26 beds for, for families. There's the Interfaith uh, um, uh, Seasonal Shelter, which has uh, 15 beds. Naomi's Way Transitional Housing uh, for uh, women and children with 11 one-bedroom apartments and five two-bedroom apartments to transition um, uh, people from um, the shelters into uh, more permanent type of housing. Uh, Bates House Transitional Housing, uh, 20 beds. Uh, State Street Transitional Housing, which is over in uh, Perth Amboy, which can also be used with 25 uh, rooms, 27 studios, we have one bedroom apartments. Uh, we also have permanent uh, supportive uh, needs housing in the city, uh, including the Triple C Promise House with uh, 10 units there. Uh, the uh, RCHP, the Reformed Church of Highland Park, has done two projects on, on Redmond Street. Each of them have three bedrooms and house five people uh, each. Uh, there's the Women Aware Shelter, uh, which has three units for um, uh, permanent uh, um, supportive needs housing for victims of uh, domestic violence, which is the first uh, um, supportive needs housing in the state of New Jersey for uh, victims of domestic violence. And there are 10 units under construction right now, right down the street at uh, Dina's Dwelling, which will have 10 units of uh, supportive needs housing for victims of uh, domestic violence. We're also looking at doing a, uh, another project next year in uh, cooperation with uh, Bergen County United Way and coming home for an additional 10 to 12 units of uh, supportive needs housing. They're currently talking to HMFA and uh, ourselves about financing for the project. Thank you, Mr. Pass. So that was a really impressive list, and I've heard of a lot of those shelters. Yet a lot of the homeless individuals in New Brunswick cannot get into those shelters due to their eligibility requirements or because they don't have access to them. So I would like to ask why are there so many people that are currently homeless in New Brunswick if it sounds like there's just so many units available for them? I, I, what's the number that you have as, as, as so many people that are homeless? What's the numbers? Over 40. Over 40? I don't think that would be Well, what, what, Where are you getting your data from? From talking to them and actually seeing them. And if we don't want to agree well, that there's 40 people. I've lived in my whole life, and I, I've never seen more than that. I, I, I don't see more than 40 homeless people. Okay, so how many have you seen? I would, say, I, would say, I would say less than 20. Less than 20. So why are those less than 20 people not being housed right now? Well, I don't, I don't know. I haven't spoken to them. But I mean, I, 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 how do I know if they made the effort to even go? Some people don't even want to go to a shelter. They'd rather live outside. Mm -hmm. I've tried to take people to a shelter a couple of times. They don't want to go. I, mean, I, I think from that impressive list right there, the New Brunswick is certainly doing its part as far as the homeless. Mm -hmm. And we're the first state, the first people in the state of New Jersey uh, to have a, a shelter for, for women who are abused for domestic violence, and we're building another 10 units right now. And I do think that's amazing, but I don't think that's all of the homeless people that are currently in New Brunswick. And I don't think that there's accurate information even about how many people that are homeless in New Brunswick. There's just a large need for a shelter, and I don't think that these units are effectively dealing with that. 
So what I'm asking for is to meet with someone specifically to talk about this instead of just hearing these numbers presented to us, being told that it's being taken care of, and then walking to the train station at night and seeing clearly that it's not being taken care of. Is that something that is Man, possible we, we, to do? We can't make people go to shelters. Some people we cannot make go. I don't yes. think the case is that people don't want to go to the shelters. So do you think the reason is because there's no place for them to go or we won't let them in, there's no room for them? That, that's, that's what you're thinking. Yes. Or there's eligibility requirements that they cannot meet and they cannot enter a current shelter. What did you say your name was? Jasmine. Can you, can you, Mr. Padgett, can you find some time to meet with her? No, I was going to add that the County of Middlesex is the continuum of care agency for Middlesex County. They are the uh, agency that coordinates all of the uh, homeless programs uh, throughout the county. Is what I just listed here is, is just what's in uh, New Brunswick and available to people here. There are a number of other uh, programs in, in other towns. So, uh, after the meeting, can you give her the person to, uh, to speak to at the county and then she can start she over there? Talk to the uh, Middlesex County uh, Community Development Office and uh, they can help her uh, with that. Uh, they have a number of people over there who can help them with that. They can explain some of the other programs they have. They do have a rapid rehousing program. Uh, I believe they have two of them one that the county operates and one that uh, Catholic Charities uh, operates for, for rapid rehousing as well as a bunch of other uh, support services, as well as support services are available in uh, New Brunswick also, such as the uh, Eric B. Chandler uh, Health Center, uh, Rutgers uh, Behavioral Health, uh, the um, three different food banks, and the, uh, and the soup kitchen. So there are a large number of services here. Is there enough to address the needs of every homeless person in New Brunswick? No, but I don't know if there's a city in, uh, in the United States that uh, has those funds. We've dedicated all of our home funds for the last three years to uh, developing supportive needs housing uh, for the homeless. Those so are all the dollars that uh, we have there. We've been very aggressive about trying to build housing for the homeless in this city and provide other support services. Yeah, I mean, we, we do pride ourselves on our record. Is there enough? Is there enough that can be done? No, I, I understand what you're saying. So what we're going to do? We can talk to Mr. Patterson after the meeting and maybe explain to you some of the things he just talked about and. and Forward to the county, but we're always trying to do more here. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the council this evening? Hi, I'm Bill Donovan, and I want to thank you for your time. My name is Sarah Lua. I'm currently also a record student. I'll be working at the county as a business analyst. So today, I would like to talk to you about statistics and numbers. Um, so the current state of what we are talking about, we must keep in mind that if we're going to talk about a homeless population, we cannot generalize and lump them all into the same category. Not saying that any of you are doing that, but this has been the bulk of my research for the past four years. So when we look at the chronically homeless population, this is a category of individuals that are not able to qualify, they're not eligible for shelters, because that is considered transitional housing. Now, chronically, chronically long-term homeless population, that actually makes up more than 50% of the current homeless population in New Brunswick. Now, if you ask what the numbers of homeless people currently are, the point in time count about three years ago um, took a poll one night and they saw that there were 40 homeless individuals. The next day, they took another count. Um, but they are not the only people with statistical research based on this. The actual number as of current 2015, it ballparks around 200 homeless individuals that do not qualify to go into shelters. Okay. So tonight I would actually like to talk about ways in which we can save the taxpayer money through programs considered, we call it rapid rehousing. It's also known, known as supportive housing as Mr. Patterson has mentioned before. Yes, that program is very effective. But we need to keep in mind that when we are talking about support services, we are talking about any type of program. We need to keep in mind that housing needs to come first. Let's say we get employment. Let's say we get health care. Let's say we get all these psychological, outpatient medical care. But if we do not have housing first, then the individual is at risk of all of the associated dangers <coughs> opposed to an individual that lives out on the streets. So tonight, what I would like to talk about, and you can interrupt me at any moment if I said anything that you find incorrect because I don't want to take away from something that you already know, but I would like to add to what you already do know. And so my research has actually shown that 
the programs that we want to further understand the magnitude of cost savings for the taxpayer, it's important to know that the cost savings are consistently found in cities all across the country in the United States. Atlanta, Georgia, northern cities here in our area, like New York City, where the implementation of these programs actually accounts for cost savings ranging from about $4,100 to $90,800 per homeless individual. And these are consistent starting from 2006 till now. So this decade of research has actually also been proven since the 1980s. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is not to say that we disregard the list of current services, but rather that those current services are undermined when we do not have the basic fundamental need of housing for these individuals, which currently we can see and, and say both from experience and from statistics that <coughs> there isn't enough housing units. And so what I would like to propose based on what we currently discussed is um, you, you, you mentioned that we're building a new housing unit for the homeless individuals, but when I calculated the cost of what that would take, it costs more to build um, an entirely new building just for the homeless. It would be so much better to purchase something already on the market, a building that already currently exists. Whether we need to refurbish that or we need to simply just buy it off the market and use that. And let's say the risk that this program does not work, right? And we say, wow, this, this did not help at all. You can resell it back onto the market without all of the startup capital that you had previously invested. If you would like figures, I have some of them. And they show that when we do a program, like the supportive housing program, in conjunction, in partnership with support services, we actually save med much more costs than we do when we initially invest in the building that way. That was, that was my point. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Benson. Just a couple of the points. The point she made about purchasing existing housing and then uh, converting that into housing for the homeless, supportive needs housing, that's exactly what we've done on Redmond Street with two different projects with um, Reform Church of, of Highland Park. So we, we have done exactly that. And she also talked about um, the housing we're building right now down at, at, at Dina's Dwelling. That is repurposing space that was not going to be used in the uh, Reformed Church there, which was a, a struggling congregation. This allows them to get some dollars so that that historic building and historic congregation can remain functional and provide um, needed supportive needs housing for domestic violence victims in a, a convenient location in the middle of, of downtown New Brunswick. It's such a good project today that Ms. Bradshaw went down to Atlantic City today and uh, to accept an award from the uh, League of Municipalities for the city of New Brunswick's innovative uh, efforts in developing um, housing for the homeless uh, with the Dino Swalling project. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Anybody else like to address the council? Yes, sir. Yes. Step right up. Good afternoon. My name is Walter Harris. Um, how you doing, Mr. Egan, Mr. Patterson, Mr. Jones? How you doing? In reference to uh, what you just stated, I just left the steering committee meeting and their budget, that's the only building out of all 14 properties that they have, that they're in the negative, they're in the wreck of that. Did it affect all the expenses and things of the nature? So that's, a, that's not even, you're, you're permanently housed, but the expenses and the costs, as Sarah and Jasmine just alluded to, is blowing you out the water. It's like they're falling behind on that. More so, I came to address your list that you just discussed prior to me coming out. I work for you gentlemen, FEMA, uh, Catholic Charity, all these services out here from coming home to continuing care. The point in time is very inaccurate because those numbers are duplicated. That's not counting the undocumented that's keep growing. And it's not counting the also undocumented that's being released to prison, I'm um, excuse me, being released from prison right now as we speak. And they're very transient homes because New Brunswick is in between a lot of different counties and they just drop off as a depot. Um, that is not the only homeless that you see. The 20, it's more than 20, it's more like 200 and growing. So it's an epidemic. More so, if you want to allude to one zebra ray coming in two years, that is a structure with how many units? Eight units, I suppose? Okay, that's still not going to count. So when we worked in Trenton with the model was actually being effectively housed. I mean, it was effectively moving towards housing. That's not the issue. The issue, yes, long term is permanent housing, but in the immediate, we need an immediate emergency shelter. There's plenty of space throughout New Brunswick. 
um, actually Pastor Seth, the RCHP program that you just discussed about, um, they are looking, they actually addressed the um, uh, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, the council building across the street on Kirkpatrick Street to build up from there. I also had a discussion with Mr. Jones about that, possibly being I want to go to your task force meeting on uh, the homeless task force meeting coming what, this Thursday or every second Thursday, I'll be there as well. But uh, we're not here to argue or not doing anything. We're not here to argue that, you know, you, there's not enough services available. There are services available, but the policies within these services are not working. I am a, an ex chronically homeless person. I have, and at the same time, I work clinically um, with everybody from the federal to the state, and Carmen Palone, the Fort Booker's office, you name it, I've worked with them. So what I wanted to propose is not only creating awareness of this issue, but the funding looks like there's three billion in the nation in HUD. Three billion in the nation in HUD. For the county, um, numbers 2009 was like 31 million. So we know that Eliza promised, yeah, they did receive the, the FEMA funding. That's what paid me while I was working for them. Nonetheless, what was hap what happened is they was they was trying to lobby to get the upstairs of 18 Nielsen, which could have housed everyone by the river. Instead, the church blocked that and they said you can use the meeting room. And we only dealt with families, individuals, veterans, things of that nature. So yes, they have a veterans thing in Holland Park. But homeless are very close-knit to New Brunswick, so they don't want to cross the bridge. So in essence, there's enough resources available if everyone, the community, the Rutgers community, you just heard that they're aware of this issue now. Um, the clergy's been aware of this issue. That's why the winter shelter was created. And actually, December 21st was honored as a National Day of Homelessness through the efforts of myself, Robert Mason, and Yvette Molina. So, this, is, this has to be addressed, it can't be pushed under the rug like I said last time. And then prior to that, there was another woman that came up and addressed the same meeting. And so like, if Catholic Charities is working, if uh, Jewish Renaissance Centers is working, if Eliza Promise, Eliza Promise has a minimal outreach where they take you a care package, a little bit of food, and drop it off and walk away. That's not outreach. Outreach is when you pop up to the rescue mission at four o'clock, the overflow shelter, there's a populist that if they don't get in at four o'clock, the outreach workers, which myself and other people, would come around in the car and say, hey, can I do a quick assessment? So the assessment is retained. And more so if you want to really get into the nitty gritty situation, homeless hotline was shut down and audited for playing with FEMA funding due to the fact that they was lying to him and saying that they rehouse individuals at a motel and then three days later they're back on the streets. So then coming home was created, taking welfare referrals, taking other eligibility requirements that I've actually mocked while I was on the street, sent 10 to 15 people at coming home and it's home they're not eligible, where they met their eligibility requirements, which they had on paper, which they I spoke to with Ms. Cruz. So my conversation, I would like to be invited into the room to affect some type of, uh, I don't know, viable plan for resources for the homeless and implement an emergency shelter. So a petition on change.org is nearly reaching a thousand people aware of this issue of the situation of homelessness, but uh, these plans, that's two years from now. Tonight, someone can die of, you know, just from being outside by the river too long. You see what I'm saying? So this is, this is, this is the nature of human rights. This is the nature of asking city government to just uh, recognize the people that live within this community because there's enough, like, th there's money coming down the pike where there'll be enough to gut a building out and place this overflow of the emergency shelter of like, military cops. For instance, you've seen that when the FEMA thing happened. And even Rutgers students felt like dislocated homeless people when the Sandy League thing happened. And automatically, Rutgers police, state police, New Brunswick police was there, gutted out Livingston, and the gym was taken care of, and like 300, homeless, uh, 300 displaced students was automatically housed. So we're asking that same assessment and that same compassion that was used for the students to be placed upon the homeless populace. Because in that homeless populace, you don't know there's no one called Jason for the homeless. It's not just addiction. It's not just UBHC bouncing these referrals back and forth. There may be a gentleman who was on Wall Street, had a bad divorce, and now all of a sudden he's, he's drinking or he just doesn't need, he just needs someone to send supportive services and wraparound services. So there's a lot of people who are, that have counsel that we're trying to create to assess this because of the fact that the existing structures that be, and you can name anyone you want to name, and I know them personally, that it's not working. There is no outreach component. And the outreach component, the only, the only respectful program that I would like to, to mention is the PATH program. The PATH program is a very, very viable program, and they come out 
to you and they do assessments, and, but that's necessarily mentally ill based. You know what I'm saying? So we're looking at, and if you look at the National Alliance to End Homelessness, they have a, a grid from like one to like seven, of like 15 different pages explaining from all over the nation how you can prevent homelessness. So as I stated last time, the numbers which Mr. Patterson put in rebuttal, that there's plenty of money there to say, okay, are we going to go together on this or are we going to privatize this and push it to the side so everybody in the city council benefits? That's not just. So I'm asking that you look at the situation and you speak with the people. I represent the homeless community. Um, they represent the Rutgers community who's more than aware of the situation now and would like to assist, not demand, not be radical or anything of that nature. We'd just like to assist and solve this problem together. So that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else like to speak to the city council? Anybody else? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Julius Moy, 77 Carmen Street. Um, I'm just here to extend an invitation uh, to an event that we're having from NJ Perk students. Um, this is going to be on December 1st um, at, on the uh, Rutgers New Brunswick campus. Um, we're going to be discussing the, the future of solar energy uh, here in New Brunswick. Um, you know, New Brunswick has already been uh, you know, a leader in solar power, having, like, I guess, it was the biggest public project of solar panel installation in the entire history of the, of the uh, state uh, just a couple years ago. And, um, you know, the future of solar energy kind of hinges on not just the environmental aspect of it, but also the job creation element, the economic situation here in the city. Um, and so we're going to be having a panel discussion um, with, Mayor, uh, with Mayor Cahill, um, as well as several other um, solar experts. Um, and I just want to extend that invitation to everybody here um, and to the city council. Um, we would love to have you there. It's going to be uh, Tuesday, December 1st, uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, and you can come contact me for any additional information. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So, where's it going to be, sir? The actual spot? Trey's Hall, and um, it's on the Douglas campus. Trey's Hall on Douglas campus. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else like to address the council this evening? Anybody else? Seeing nobody else? Move to adjourn. Second. Yeah. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes.